Hello people, in today's video I'm going to give you an overview of everything you need to know before you start an Airbnb business. Hopefully by the end of this video you should have a good idea about where to start. Hi guys, I'm Jim, welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to cover finding your area and target market, how to research competitors for pricing and demand, some costs to consider when starting out and the different ways you can purchase or control properties to use for your Airbnb business. This video is an introduction and general overview to Airbnb. If you're looking for something more detailed, check out my video, The Ultimate Step-by-Step -step Guide to Starting an Airbnb Business. Most people have a good idea what Airbnb is now. It's the largest marketplace for vacation rentals and short-term stays. People will book anywhere from one month all the way up to six months. Now the growth for Airbnb has been truly incredible over the last few years. This offers property investors and entrepreneurs a unique opportunity to build massive businesses. The first consideration you want to make when starting an Airbnb business is where you're going to do it. Ideally, you want to be around a 40 minute drive away from your investment area. In case anything happens, you can always pop over and sort the situation out. You can run an Airbnb business remotely. However, I wouldn't suggest this for beginners. I'd suggest starting local wherever you are within 40 minutes, cutting your teeth and learning all the do's and don'ts. And then if you want to expand out geographically, you can do this down the line. So you want to jump on Google Maps and start looking at your local area to see what's in the vicinity. A good list of things to look for are the following. Building sites, city centers, tourist areas, big business slash industry in the area, sports slash music venues in the area, conference centers, race courses, hospitals, and universities. Now, all of these things are gonna drive the demand in your area, and this is gonna massively affect your target market, which we're gonna talk about next. Another good reason why it's important to invest local to where you are is you have a lot of knowledge on that area. You'll know who all the big businesses and employers are, you know if there's any up and coming projects, and if it's a tourist area, you'll know when the high and low seasons are. And all this information is invaluable when it comes to starting an Airbnb business. So you need to exploit the knowledge you already have about your area. Next up, we're gonna talk about the target market. Now the target market and the area you choose to invest in, these two are normally very interlinked. You need to let the area guide your decision on the target market. For example, you don't want a romantic Airbnb in the middle of a building site. It's just not gonna work. Pretty much everyone stays in Airbnbs these days. However, it is helpful if you tailor your units towards your ideal target market. Now you're not going to get this target market 100% of the time, but if you've got a vision in your own mind of who's going to be coming to your property, you can better tailor the setup of the unit towards this person. So what different groups do we have in our target market? Well, the first one might be corporate slash business professionals. These types of guests might stay with you from a Monday to a Friday while they're working away in a different city or area. These type of guests might expect a higher quality when it comes to the accommodation, as it's probably a business expense for them, so they won't be paying for it. A good idea for this might be to ring local businesses in your area and see what sort of allowances they give to their employees. Next up, you have the contractor market. These type of guests might be staying with you for a 10 week block while they're working on a project. It might be installing a new shop or doing some roadworks. Normally, these types of guests are driven by price per night per person. So it might be advantageous for you to give them a discount if they're gonna stay with you for a long time. Next up, you might have leisure guests. This could be couples or families getting away for the week or the weekend. A nice touch for these type of guests might be leaving some chocolates upon arrival. As you can see, these three different types of groups are completely different. Their expectations would be different on price and in terms of quality of the product. So it's really important that you understand which one of these you're trying to target and you can tailor the setup of your unit around this target market. Next up, you wanna jump on Airbnb and research your competitors. You wanna set a radius for the target market you're aiming for and see who is operating within that vicinity. Vital you understand all the people who are operating within your past. You need to see who's doing good and who's doing not so good. So it's definitely worth reading the reviews on all of these properties. Fingers crossed you should get a type of feel for the guest the other host is trying to target. And it shouldn't be a million miles away from who you're trying to target if you're in the same area. It's worth spending a bit of time researching these competitors and checking how much they're charging per night, if they charge more on the weekend and to see what their demand is like. So you can see their calendar to see how booked up they are. If they have no bookings and you've checked all the reviews and there's nothing obvious wrong with the property, maybe the demand isn't there in that area. However, you can also pay for a website called AirDNA, which will spit up a load of data and information about your investment area, including price per night, occupancy rates, and general demands throughout the year. It's 100% worth doing this before you set your unit up because you want to make sure that it's going to be a viable business before you even start it. So next up, we're going to talk about how you can either purchase or control properties in order to repurpose them for Airbnb. Firstly, you could purchase the property with cash or you could use a mortgage. However, you will need a specific holiday let mortgage on the property as most buyers let mortgages don't allow you to do Airbnb style stuff with them. So it's definitely worth speaking to a good mortgage broker to get the right product. Secondly, you could do a rent to rent deal, which is seen as the lowest cost entry point in order to get into Airbnb. Basically involves signing a corporate tenancy between the landlord and your Airbnb business. 
but I'm going to go into more detail into this into my ultimate step-by-step -step guide to starting an Airbnb business. So make sure you check that out. The final option is to become a management agent. Now normally you can charge 50% of the revenue to manage the property for the landlord. However, I wouldn't say this is a beginner strategy, but this is something you can consider down the line when you have more experience. Like we said earlier, you want to make sure setting up your unit is going to be a viable business. So there's lots of costs to consider when doing this. I'm going to list some for you now. You're going to have your rent or your mortgage, depending on how you're purchasing or controlling the property. You're going to have council tax, home insurance, Airbnb fees, cleaning and linen fees, gas, electricity and water, Wi-Fi and television license. And this is without any extras like super fast broadband or like a sky package with sports. Now a lot of that is going to be driven by who your target market is. There might be an expectation for a sports package to come with the Airbnb unit. So you'll probably find this out when you do your research into your area and target markets. But this is another cost that could be added on top. After looking at your competitors and on AirDNA, you should have an idea of how much to charge per night and you want to break even at around 50% occupancy in the month. So this means if you're full for half the month, you cover all of your costs. But ideally, you want to aim for around 75% occupancy to make a decent profit. This will depend on your location, target market, and seasonality. For example, if you're in the Lake District, chances are you're going to make all of your money in the summer months as opposed to the winter months. So in the summer, you might have to charge a higher fee in order to break even across the whole year. This is definitely something to consider when looking at your numbers. Then you can move on to setting up your unit. Ideally, you want to use your competitors as a benchmark, but ideally you want to go one better and be the best in your area. Like we stated earlier, a lot of this will be driven by your target market. In terms of fitting out your property, you can look on Facebook and Gumtree to find furniture. However, I would suggest this again depends on your target market. This might not be too bad for the contractor market, but if you're looking for corporate clients, they might expect a higher quality and a nicer touch to the property. And you don't want to give them used furniture. When you're setting up your units, you want to have your target market in the forefront of your mind. For example, if it's the contractors, you might want to leave them an area to leave their tools in overnight. These little touches will make the difference in the long term. And they'll also give you good reviews. And the more time you spend on Airbnbs, you'll learn how vital good reviews are to being successful. When you finish the setup, you want to spend some money getting some professional photos done. Because iPhone photos will just not cut it. You want to have professional photos. Remember, you've only got a fraction of a second to draw someone's attention. So if you've got a really nice, crisp, well lit photo the chances of you getting a booking are a lot higher on the subject of getting bookings you want to make sure that your listing on airbnb is live before the property is actually ready so i would suggest doing it two to three weeks before the property is going live putting the start date at the live date and use some stock photos but remember you must tell people that it's not going to look exactly like the stock photos and say they are just stock photos but the advantage of this is you're going to build up some interest and you might actually have some bookings beforehand. Because if you spend all this time putting hours and spend the money setting up the units and then you press go, it might be like two to three weeks before someone even books. So you want to move that to as early as possible. But like I said, make sure you make people aware in the descriptions that it's not going to look exactly like this. It's going to look similar to this, but not exactly the same because the units are still being set up. It's also worth spending some time making sure your listing is populated correctly. You want to look at the best performing Airbnbs and model how they have described their properties. You want to make sure everyone's got all the relevant information they need in the description. Finally, you want to make sure someone spends a night in the property before it goes live. This could be you or someone you know. The reason for this is you'll be able to iron out all the creases within the property. If there's any little issues around the house, you'll be able to spot them and get them addressed before it goes live. It's guaranteed that's the sort of stuff which could lead to negative reviews down the line. Such would you're in a better position to start an Airbnb. But if you're looking for a more detailed guide, check out my ultimate step-by-step -step guide to starting an Airbnb business. In that video, I'll be covering background systems, how to get longer bookings, and why you don't want to be relying on Airbnb all the time. In order to find out when that video is released, please subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications bell on, and you'll be the first to hear about it.